one better than Brosnahan. The same casting behind another actress in a movie that is being outperformed by indie Christian films right now. Oh, well, yeah. We're, we're, we're shaving a little thin here for me to follow some of this. Uh, we're shaving. Shave your beard. Hey, did, you see her, did you see Britney Spears slapped herself in the face? <laughs> no. Wait, she didn't. No, oh. she got slapped. No, the security guard slapped, pushed her face in her, pushed her hand into her face. Oh. Uh, did, did he say, stop hitting yourself? <laughs> stop hitting yourself? <laughs> no. This is an international <laughs> incident. That was a French bodyguard, right? Uh, something like that. That's because that was Victor Wembanyama. He's the the French phenom for the NBA at summer league. Uh, I don't like that. You don't touch. Don't don't put French hands on Britney Spears. It's America's yeah. Pop leave princess. Britney alone. I wish leave somebody, Britney if I, alone. If I had a time machine, I would go back and send that message. Uh, AP reporting police declined to press charges due to the surveillance video, not the phone video, confirming the security guard's hand hit Britney's arm and Britney's hand hit herself in the face. I still don't like it. Where's Biden? Biden I, need, I need a I need a statement on this. Come on, Sleepy Joe. Well, not anymore with what's floating around that place. <laughs> I, I come like. On, come on, man. He's waking why, why, up. Why are people hitting Britney? He's waking it's up. Like, I, like, I like the meme that you can't call him Sleepy Joe and complain that he's got coke at the White House. Exactly. At the same time. <laughs> well, we don't think he's the one using it. Joe Blow. <laughs> I'm shocked, shocked that there's cocaine in the White House. All uh, right. Uh, you guys want to do some more things? I'm shocked that somebody found cocaine left over. <laughs> that there was any left over. I have known. It was look, not an empty I've bag. Known, <laughs> I have known a few coke users in my life. Here's one thing that has never happened. <laughs> they All just were like, whoops. Bags. <laughs> uh, uh, no. If coke is found at an Applebee's, that's a news story. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. I'm good to go. I'll catch you in for the Weird Things program in three Two. Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Adrian Mead, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello, hello. Justin Robert Young. Well, hello, friends. And Bryce, the menace Castillo. Yow! Hello. <laughs> the menace. <laughs> that would be your boxing name. I could totally. No, know. that's, right, that's his morning Castillo. zoo name. That's, you know, it, it, it's, it's. Menace in the morning. No, no, you two, you two. It's it, it, it Drew and the menace. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, what's going on, Drew? <laughs> <laughs> Another late night of partying, eh, Brian? I, I know it, man. I'm seeing the traffic on the 45. I was hanging out with my friend. I call him Sleepy Joe. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. were up all night, and though. No, you're 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 intern was, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> the reality was we were on like talking to each other while playing Call of Duty all night long. But we, mm. you know, <laughs> did the do the AM radio pretending to be the wild guy party people. That's that's where that line from Bad News Bears finds itself, <laughs> is in the lobbies yeah. of Call of Duty. <laughs> Yes. Uh, yeah, it was, it was a report that came out where somebody was claiming that Facebook Horizons only had something like 30 active users per day, which as <laughs> not warned by the experience I am, I have trouble believing that because the moment you show up in a place like that, you're usually swarmed by at least that many 12-year-olds. The, yeah. I, I saw a follow-up to that. In That report had been talking about one specific experience within Horizons. And so, yeah, more than hundreds of people yeah, have used Horizons, I, I, but it's still not a high number that we believed that, that hundreds of dollars earned was actually how much Horizons made. Yeah, that maybe, yeah, like that was a, uh, I was like, all right, I just bought an Oculus uh, Pro. How is it? Um, it's, you know, the, 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 the resolution, all that's a lot better. Uh, the hand tracking is better. The, the, and then it's got pupil tracking. I haven't really dug into it a whole lot. The downside is like, and I don't recommend it, unless you're like a developer looking, and the controllers are really good. If you're really like a developer looking to play around with whatever, it's kind of like cutting edge for that kind of system, fine. But otherwise, uh, wait for the Quest 3, you know, yeah. or, you know, better yet, the Apple Vision, depending upon how committed you are to AI, and that you, you know, the VR. Experience. Which, uh, by the way, I saw the headline that uh, 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 is it called Test Flight or whatever uh, it has now allowed people to start testing apps for Apple Vision. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me because you can you can use the simulator in Apple Vision, and if you want people to develop for it, you're going to have to you know have some means to do. It. I opened up the SDK for Apple Vision and played around with that, um, and it, it's interesting because I've talked to some people who are kind of like 
been public about some of their thoughts on it. And then I probably be like, well, you know, it does this, or, you know, there's just a capability they didn't talk about at, you know, worldwide developers conference. And it's been sort of like, oh, it's like, hard to believe this, everybody, but Apple has a long-term plan for this. Yeah. Well, and, and as a matter of fact, along those lines, I was thinking about the very long schedule that we have before this thing actually sees the light of day. And I was thinking about how quietly disappointed I was that, that, there's not anything to hold in my hands or whatever. But then I thought about the Nintendo Switch and about how they very loudly showed off how awesome the Switch is, but they very quietly said, also, you can have a regular controller. So I would yeah. not at all be surprised if just around release time, we suddenly found out that there are gizmos that you can hold in your hand that feel like a weapon so that you could do all the cool VR things. Oh, there'd totally be VR yeah. controllers. Yeah, because remember, if you if you Zabruder go back, those of you know Zabruder is the guy that did the film of JFK yeah. getting yeah. killed, yeah. and yeah. I, I use that reference so many times. There was many people, you know, that is people really, don't really, know Zabruder. Uh, you know what? Uh, that's on them. What? That's on them. They should do their homework and they find know, out. They don't I know. Think it's a conspiracy, Z. to be honest. Gen Z, exactly. let us you know, know if you know Zabruder. What? What do you think it stands you, for? <laughs> yeah. They should if know. If you Zabruder, the, if you Zabruder it, go back look detail by detail. You notice there's they talk about playing regular games like apple apple unveiled a new uh a uh, new library to make it easier to import triple a games like people are getting like cyberpunk running on etc they showed in the demo video somebody using a regular controller to play a game in there so clearly it's going to accept controllers is it going to be just take your you know your quest controller or some sort of standard sort of controller and it works with it i don't know we'll it, it maybe i think they just didn't want people thinking gaming. They didn't. They didn't want the press, the tech press, and all that to talk about, you know, the, it's a, that it's a VR, even a VR headset. It, it, it's funny. So this morning, uh, my wife went shopping yesterday and bought these new pants, and I immediately recognized them because they were the pants that the lady in the demo <laughs> is is wearing. Oh, the khaki khaki pants. Yes. with sort of the bell flare bottoms. With, yeah. with the bell flare bottoms, and so I was like. Like, oh, like those are, yeah, this lady here, uh, maybe she's not wearing them. Anyway, uh, it's, it's when she's in the hotel and they want to show, this is a businesswoman. Yeah. But they were like, okay, we need to lead with a woman because those are the, that's the demo we're going to have to convince to everybody that this is not just a sweaty tool for a bunch of nerds, that this is something that is uh, uh, more accessible. And we can't do the thing that Meta does to get women to buy VR, which is fitness. Like it's all like sports bras oh, and leggings. And no, they can. They're just not. That's going to be another. There's full fit sure. support yes, in there. Yes, they yes. just didn't I, want I, it. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm saying in this first impression, in this got first you, impression. Got you, got you. And that's why they have to have this lady with these pants because A, they're smart and stylish, and B, they have pockets. Because you need the pocket to let the supple woven cable uh, connect your battery. And so that that is, uh, uh, I was like, like, oh, Apple Vision Pro pants. <laughs> I, uh, it, it's interesting that, uh, like we talked about this for a second, I guess, is that this is, you know, people look at this like, oh, am I supposed to be here all day? I'm like, well, you're not supposed to be in front of your phone all day or your computer all day or your iPad all day. You know, we have, and then, I mean, my life is I wake up, check my phone, Go to my iPad, read the news, sit down on my computer in front of here, take a break. Maybe I go do that. And then at some point I use a Kindle, you know, and I have my watch I check. And then at night I will read my iPad. Then I'll go watch my Apple TV. So the screens that I have in my house used to be you had one screen that was controlled by a computer, which would have been your computer. And now all these screens. So I think there's going to be a case for like that. I, I spent a lot more time at Kindle. I just got this Kindle scribe, which I can talk about at some point if you guys are curious. But I do think that we have to think about it. it lives in a world with other screens exist. Yeah, I, I think we're we're in an era now. If this is what it's supposed to be, and I, I will always put that caveat until we get them in our hands. But it's similar to me with uh, what's happened with AI, where we had generations worth of stories and fiction told about. Uh, technology like this. And so inherently we are always going to anchor our experiences into what we have read and what we have dream dreamt and what we have imagined much like AI has been a magic technology in fiction. 
virtual reality or, or augmented reality has been a pervasive technology in our fiction. Like we are, uh, uh, you know, constantly thinking about, okay, well, what's the world where we just have it on a hundred percent of the time. Do we really want that? Or did we just like reading a story about that? We will find out ultimately it is only the technology that will bridge it for this piece of, of, of tech. If it is just a laptop on your face, it will be an amazing gigantic world changing event. Uh, uh, obviously I don't think it's going to be the same thing that we have always read about, uh, about, about virtual reality or AR, but in the same way that chat GPT isn't every AI, uh, a, a fantasy story that we've ever read. I don't think that that made, makes it any less of an interesting technology. Yeah. I, I sometimes will re realize how like multi multimodal life is now, you know, I can be on my laptop or on a desktop or on my phone or on the iPad in different places with different connectivity, different usage. Um, and yeah, I have my preference of what things work, but uh, it's no longer, you know, you've got the big, the big beige PC in the middle of the house and you're trying to route that everywhere because everything has a screen. Um, I think as long as that we find a use a good 3d work use case to have a, a vr headset then that'll that'll make it space it's on its own um or it won't and then maybe we don't need this maybe we I, don't need it but I, we probably I, I, will i i stand behind uh my I, I think i said a version of this before if not i'll say it right now uh this thing makes so much sense if you live in a van or if you have fewer than two people in your house uh, uh, once you, once you have a lot of people because specifically because if if it's good then it's not competing with your computer or whatever else mm -hmm. is competing with your next gigantic high definition television experience and it could be that that is the most theatrical experience you could possibly get is to is to to hop in on one of those and the number of people in your household uh, I think is going to be directly proportional to how many of these get sold inversely proportional well uh, uh, uh since you know we're gonna have a lot of runway to talk about the apple vision pro and whether or not it will be a success or not can we talk about threads oh yeah the new Burr. is anyone on threads I'm getting who's threaded. got their threads hands in the air if you downloaded threads you showed up and you ain't checked it since. Keep your hands in the air if you also did the what? same thing for Blue Sky. <laughs> Keep your hands in blue the air. Sky, blue if, Sky, if maybe... Blue Sky, I'm out on. I'm May out on Blue Sky. Uh, okay, that, I'll send you an invite. No, oh my God. Uh, I will not. <laughs> blue Sky is an act of moral cowardice. <laughs> okay, Keep your hands in the air if you're, you're rethinking the only one your entire relationship with social media. <laughs> I mean, that's fine. I, 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 I'm saying for everybody, either tweet or be healthy. Just don't fool yourself into thinking that you need to do something other than just tweeting. That's fine. You're allowed to do that. You can choose your own adventure in the world of social media. Well, yeah, but I don't want to, and I don't want to do that on Twitter anymore. God bless you. Okay. <laughs> Thank I you. hope you're healthy. I hope for you nothing but health and, and, and happiness, <laughs> dear Bryce. Uh, Threads is neat. I It kind of sucks that it's only algorithmic. There's only just... Eh, we think we know what you'll like. Yeah. But also that's crazy. Facebook and Instagram know that if you're using a, a social network and you hit refresh, that you want to see new things. I, I, that is what killed me on co-host the most is I would log what in. What the hell is co-host? I'm so glad you said it before I had to. <laughs> co-host co is uh, a Tumblr like uh, uh, social media oh, website. Geez. Um, I never know anymore. It could have been a, a Tumblr clone. It could have no. been one of the extras from the idol. Who's apparently a, a big singer on SoundCloud. Like, I don't know, but, but with co-host, which, which is, I is what people say that they want, right? No ads, chronological view, all mm -hmm. sorts of different types of posts, wh what have you. Um, but if I refresh it, if I come back to it in two days and there are still no new posts because I didn't follow enough people or I didn't do whatever, then it just seems like a ghost town. So at least for threads, they're making use of getting a, a billion people signing up in, in two days. Um, and that's not nothing. Is one of those billion people 
Andrew Maine? No. Oh. No. Uh, I not like saying in full disclosure, I do have a small amount of money invested in Facebook because I think Zuckerberg is smart. The, his choices and stuff are things that he's created a product that's not for me. Like the, I had to, to, to activate my Oculus Pro, I had to open up my Facebook account and I hadn't spent like 30 minutes because I don't know what my password is because I just don't use it. So that was fun. Um, and then like I had this in my driver's license, all this other stuff, which I, just made me hate the experience even more. Uh, for threads, I, they're like, well, it's your Instagram handle. Okay. So the, the rush to get my name in there, I don't care about, cause I'm Andrew main on Instagram, which I barely ever use because every other thing is an ad. Um, I, my, I, I get why they did it. You know, my wife's like, why is he doing this? I'm like, because there's money to be made. There's people very unhappy at Twitter. And, and if they have advertisers, like I get, I get the reasoning for doing it. For me, I just said, I don't, I post on Twitter. That's where I go. I post on Twitter. I'm not going to be there. I don't want to have to go. Should I post on Threads? Should I post on this? Every time I've tried a new Facebook product, I've been so frustrated by the experience of what they've done. If they start with algorithmic, if they're starting with, yeah, not even the people you just want to see, we're going to put other people in your timeline. That to me is, was the, de that was the number one deal breaker was the fact that, oh, you hit the thing you hate most. I hate most about Twitter and I hate everything else is the algorithmic. I use lists, 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 lists. I do not do anything else. I don't want an algorithmic feed. I really, really, really do not want it. Mm -hmm. And then second was like, oh yeah, if you try to delete your, your threads, threads account, it deletes yeah. your Instagram. I'm like, that's sleazy. That's the things that you know, when Facebook does something so, that I go, they sorry, sorry, sorry. amazing what, tech. I, I, I'm unfamiliar with this story. What What is it? When you die in the matrix, you die for real. If you want to, yeah. if you activate threads, you can't deactivate your Threads account because it's well, basically no, 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 no. a shade. You of can't your, delete can't, it. You can deactivate it, right? I, I'm meaning that to mean the same thing. Okay, got you. Yeah, there, yeah. there is, and that might it might be because I don't know a, if it's a, deleting a distinction or de without a difference. But right. you cannot fully delete it. You can say I am deactivating it for now. And but, also, but like, meanwhile, be, all, all of your oh. your 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 Threads are chiseled in stone. You can make them private, Who just like you knows? can on Twitter. I don't know. I don't know. I just know the app's boring. That was my biggest thing about it, where it's mm -hmm. like, like, okay, like, give me a little song, a little dance, a little seltzer down your pants. Like, like, this is just a flat, boring app that looks kind of flat and boring and doesn't really seem to add much to me. So I think those are, I think all of those problems are easy things to solve and easy wins for a fledgling new brand new social network. Like, we heard you. Here's your algorithmic, or here's your chronological feed. We heard you. Here oh, they, are they ain't doing that. That ain't never coming. I'm telling you right now, it ain't never coming because but they've said they have it on Instagram and they've said that they will. It's on the roadmap. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> it's on the roadmap. Don't worry, I, it's on the roadmap. No, because because it, it's it, ad space. They need ad space. Like so, and you every, can put ads in a chronological feed. What? Every the, every you decision. Don't, you don't stay there as long. That's why they have algorithmic feeds. Every decision they make comes down to a spreadsheet, doing A-B testing, things like this, and what gives them the most engagement, the highest re ad revenue. That is every decision. You have to look at every decision goes to that filter. So I talk to my wife, and she says, like, why don't they do a subscription? I said, well, here's the funny thing about subscriptions is if your users, if the people who will pay for a subscription will keep using your app without a subscription, then you don't offer a subscription because the people willing to pay for a subscription are your highest value ad people to advertise to. Because that's who at customer, that's who you know, advertisers want is they want the person that can has a, can think nothing of you know twenty bucks a month disposable income. You go sign up for Hulu. First thing, here's our here's our ad version. Oh, you have to click the little tab to find our other options to find out. Like, yes, there is a ad free version of Hulu. Why do they offer ad free? Because I ain't gonna be on Hulu if I have to watch ads. And so they know there's a number they put on that to try to capture people, but. For social media, like like Facebook, oh yeah, don't worry, guys, we're never gonna make it paid. Like, yeah, you don't, you lose money. You know, that was the thing they used to say like ten years ago. People got worried to be the panic about, you know, a paid product. But uh, so okay. that's for, that's but, very sim similar to a sentiment I heard expressed on uh, my favorite tech podcast, uh, the Great Night Bonus Patreon episode <laughs> that we had yesterday. <laughs> no, yeah, uh, <laughs> we are we are we are uh, uh, probably because uh, my worldview was largely shaped by our conversations on this, but like uh, 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 unsurprisingly, Andrew and I are are very similarly aligned in the in the you know follow the money in all of this for Facebook and Google specifically is make no mistake. 
everything that they do, it is to sell ads. They are an ad well, yeah. sales company. That's it. I don't think anybody's disputing no. that. But I think you get people will wonder, they'll go, why did they do this? Why? Because the data somewhere showed them and maybe they interpreted wrong, but it, it literally, it always goes back to that answer. And once you look at that lens, you get to that answer sooner. You know, and, and, and also like predicting what, what next steps are going to be. So, uh, I mean, I, I could see, yeah, they might do, they, if they're fighting for people with Twitter, they, cause they got this great sign up growth, but a month out from now, they're looking at, they're not getting a lot of usage and stuff. And some, one of their stats is, yeah, people like, uh, they like, they want to have a timeline, non algorithm feed. Um, and we think we can, we'll, we will make money by putting that out there. Cause otherwise those people are just going to Twitter. They might do it. Like I, I, I'm open to, you know whatever they're going to do. Yeah. I mean, possible. It, it, it's enough that like it is hidden in the Instagram app, but they do have it there. And th it was enough of a deal that on the first day they said, we hear you and we'll do something. Yeah. I, and it probably won't be, you know, it probably won't be easy to get to like, just like it kind of sucked for a while on Twitter, like for on Twitter, it really wanted you to do for you. Um, which, uh, okay. it defaults to that on the website. Yeah. It's yeah. frustrating. Um, and it's, I go there less because of that, because I don't just go hop into my feed. I have to go through multiple steps to get to where I want to go. Do you guys so do the thing where you don't ever. realize you're on the for you thing? And then you're like, who the hell is this guy? And and then you eventually realize, oh, I'm in algorithm land. Uh, yeah. Every time I'll be like, this is stupid. And then. Yeah. Un un unfortunately, even my curated lists, everybody is so uh, like I spent months intentionally unfollowing anybody who posted anything political full stop yeah and yet my whole uh, homepage feed is filled with a bunch of political crap because people can't help but hit that retweet button when, yeah. and so it's a bunch mm -hmm. of people i don't know saying things i don't like about things i don't care about and uh and i if i you could you can disable retweets from uh, from people too you can uh, not I, follow I, I guess I, 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 maybe that's uh, that, that something is... that i need to set up in tweet deck or whatever cuz i i don't use the default app for anything well uh, you're on, you're you're going with god on that one then well, yeah. oh, okay I don't, sorry okay. No, sorry, I, I, <laughs> no i'm not okay never mind <laughs> sorry for helping yeah, Bryce, don't be so helpful. Right? Yeah. <laughs> just, just, yeah, just stop hey. it. Let's but no, let's keep litigating this. Uh, so, Threads, is it going to be a? How are, how are you, Justin? How should we use Threads? Is it going to be Twitter? <laughs> is it just Twitter too? Here's my Will problem it with it: is that we have to ask that question. That there's no natural use case other than how much do you hate Elon Musk? Do you hate Elon Musk enough that, or, or have, and I b believe that this is a pure and true idea, that you feel that the old town that you left, that was the problem? No, I'm going to go to a new town where there's going to be new people, and, and that's really going to solve my issues. If, if you believe that by restarting a community that maybe a better vibe will develop maybe different rules maybe with a second chance at a first opportunity you can uh, create a better sense of community uh you know I, I get people wanting to do that or just the the flash idea of twitter was good now twitter is bad it was the same thing that started uh, a parlor and truth social and stuff like that a few years All ago right, peach well, now peach at least was really fun because Peach uh, uh, like packed in all of these dumb looping photos thing. It was very GIF heavy. It was very media heavy. Uh, uh, it was an app that was kind of doomed, but at least there was an element of excitement to it. Whereas I, I guess I, I don't know how people will eventually use threads. My suspicion is, and I don't think it's going to go away. I think it'll be around for a long time, but we'll find out what community really wants to be there and it'll eventually take on the personality of that community. But I do think that it will be community focused. Like there'll be a certain kind of people that go on thread in the same way that there's a certain kind of people that go on blue sky. Um, mm. and, and a certain kind of person that goes on Mastodon. If you, if you look at the history of these communities, they have these, they have their swells and then they kind of come back down and Twitter I think is, at least in the microblogging world, uh, you know the 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 lead dog. But even then, Twitter's never been as big as a lot of the other 
uh, social media apps. It's always been a subsection of a subsection. And now we're looking at subsections of subsections of subsections because people are mad at this other subsection. So I, I, I do think that people will find it, but we, we can't know now. We can't know when it's new and exciting and everybody's doing stuff because I've posted three times and they were basically just bait to get people to respond to me. Mm. I did one that was the Diamond Club because I could always post a Diamond Club thing no matter what social media platform it is and people will just put the diamond in the in the comments. I tried to bait people politically by just saying communism, good. <laughs> uh, and that really hasn't gotten a ton of, re- of, of, of uh, uh, traction to it. And then I think I put something else. And then I responded to a few other people and that was it. You know, hold this thread I, while I walk away. I think... I think there's going to be, there are a lot of people that just really do hate Twitter and the other networks, the other stuff were always, whether, whether it's going to be Mastodon or Truth Social or Parler or Blue Sky, we're always going to have enough trouble because they just to get people into them was just going to be hard. It was just going to get hard for that. I think there's enough people willing to go into threads to create conversations. I, you know, when I hear like, yeah, it's everybody following Instagram, like, okay, the, the, you mean the site that I used to joke was Twitter for illiterates? Like <laughs> now I want to hear what this this crew what? has to say. Just an amazing take, an amazing take. All these yeah. years later. So yeah, great. Now now I get like people who I like Brian. Like yeah, I don't. It's like I don't need politics. I don't need politics from people who sit around watching the news or retweet something and are in a bubble. And don't realize they're in a bubble. I just to me it's just not that engaging for me and interesting to me because it's like I'm happy. I'm happy to have discussions about politics. I just want to make sure that we all did the reading list first and then we get into it because there's stuff I didn't do the reading list on, so I don't talk about. Well, but, and, and the yeah. uh, uh, the operative word there, of course, is discussion, which means two yeah. parties who are discussing a thing. And uh, uh, I ain't seen it on Twitter. I ain't seen it on Facebook. I ain't seen it on any social media. I have seen it uh, in podcasts and I have seen it in email threads. And I have seen it in long form, you know, your blog post content and so on. But outside of that, yeah. not a lot of it. Yeah. And there are people I really, really like who I can tolerate their Instagram posts. You know, every now and then it might be something sort of silly. I do not need to see their thoughts on threads. I really don't want to see that. There we go. So, you know what we do want to see? <laughs> oh, we want to see a stampede of traffic, friends. Like a, a a a busy Serengeti, we want you to trample anything in front of you but twixt you and Patreon.com slash weird things. Everything? Y- yes. Oh yeah. Wow. Oh, Any yeah. and everything. I don't I don't care what it is. You need to get to patreon.com slash weird things right now. So support the show. Get a, 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 a subscriber only Discord link. You get early access to the After Things podcast. Guys, it's just that simple. Patreon.com slash weird things. So I want to talk a little briefly about something. We got an email from a listener who who um, was frustrated by us treating like UAPs kind of like not seriously with a bit of ridicule. Yeah. And I don't want to name them by name, whatever. Um, and I, I wrote I, back to them. I think I see, see do you guys on that? You did. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, but, but uh, UAPs uh, are the new words for UFO. UFOs. UFOs. Yeah. Same thing, different name. Um, Everything's just, getting rebranded. You know. And I, I and, and they may be listening, whatever. I appreciate your comment. I appreciate your, your observation. I, and what I, I'm going to reiterate for everybody else, the reason that I talk about this is, to quote uh, uh, my hero, Logan Roy, <laughs> to the, the the UAP, like you're not serious people. Like, the, and not talk about people who follow this. I'm talking about the proponents of people running these orgs. They are not serious people. And and I brought up in this email back to somebody. It's like, here's the latest 30 page rundown from one of these orgs about some of this phenomenon. Never once does this research paper entertain the idea. Oh, maybe it's a lens flare inside of this Raytheon imaging system, which happens and is documented, and we know this happens. You know, and so that's my problem is not the I'm, I'm open to anything. I, I believe we're in a simulation. So if we said unicorns are flying through the sky, there is a non-zero probability to me that that could be true. That being said, is the evidence, you know, quote, needs to be extraordinary claims or extraordinary evidence. And when you look at this and you see how 
badly and shoddily these things are looked at by the proponents of this, it is hard to take them seriously. It is not. You know, why I, I got hold of the system to try to, because what, ask the first question, is it an imaging system problem? They never ask that. They just go right to, we saw an object. What was the object? So that frustrates me. I don't, I think it's, I think some of the people, I have friends who are in the community who are quote unquote believers and who do lectures and talk about this stuff. I know privately, they will tell you that most of the stuff is BS and they know a lot of these people are grifters. You know, I have friends who are, Incredible people who are involved in the side of it, and it's a, it is a, you know, you make some money, you do conferences, you do this sort of stuff. It's a fun sideline, and they don't really tell you what they really think. And the the smarter ones know, like, yeah, that's probably bullshit. Yeah, it's bullshit, but it's fun to think about it. Well, well, uh, uh, help help me get a sense of time and place here. Where is there in the papers? Like, are are these scientific journals or are these like MUFON no, the, the, magazines or the new, like MUFON sort of thing? It's that's what it is. It's like you go to the you know the Institute for AI UAP research, whatever. Here's our latest report, and you read it, and you're like, oh wow, this is written by a belief. This is it's fine to be a believer, but this is written by somebody who is not using any kind of skeptical or critical lens. This is a person who has decided, oh, this thing's real. There's a there's an object out there not going, what's my base, you know, let's what's my core premise? What do I need to check? Was there a thing captured? And it's always these light flares and stuff and stuff that we we know what happens and the, the problem UAP stuff, it's all this, it's this FLIR imaging systems which are super prone to any any kind of like if you have an aircraft and let's say you have you know, a particular shiny piece of something on a wing or some other reflective thing, or you get a grit or dirt or something. There are these little things that can cause these light flares on there. Cause a lot of times you see, oh, we tracked this thing. It's like, yeah, it's, it's moving exactly with the camera. Cause it's got, it's, it's basically just keeping, you know, it's like a autofocus that keeps hunting this thing. And so when you talk to people who really understand how these things work, it's, it's no mystery. Yeah. Yeah. But. Well, uh, where do you think the, 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 desire to anchor in to those kind of beliefs like like where, where 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 where's where's the animating emotion from i i had somebody say something to me which i thought was very interesting and i maybe i mentioned this to you before i think that it was the it's the the last safe conspiracy theory because it's kind of apolitical yeah Okay. Um, you, you, yeah, I guess so, right? It's, it's like not. Very... It's not. It's not red versus blue. It, it doesn't involve nope. money, yep. so it doesn't like wire into any kind of economic system or anything like that. Like, there's really no one to blame. But both sides e can everyone agree that, would... that there's a they to yeah. to be afraid e of. E everyone that you'd with. blame would be, you know, from outer space, unless in this latest thing, it's you know the the the. That actually does cross into some one world government <laughs> stuff where I was about to say, the, the like, world has been holding back UAP. We're, we're tech. very close to describing the literal plot of Watchmen at this point. It's the one thing that you can unify all of humanity is uh, the belief in an alien threat. In an al yeah, maybe in, it's in a, a moral threat, good yeah. to do so. Fair point. I didn't, that's a great analogy to that was in Watchmen. So I, I heard somebody said that. I said, yeah, I think that. I think that also it's like, they, the videos are compelling. Like, if you don't understand anything about these imaging systems or what's going on, the mechanics of that, and you see this thing, I, I get it. I get it. And I've watched skeptics interpret incorrectly systems like this before that I've had to go out to the field and recreate to show how these things happen. I've watched skeptics provide explanations for what happened that were incorrect. And, and I think that I, I do want to, I, I always have to caution myself on sort of this knee jerk sort of thing because. You know, when I hear a thing, oh, have you heard about this? Like, okay, let me go look at the footage itself before I tell you if it's BS or not. It's like, oh, I, I can believe anything. Like, yeah, this is, you know, this is a classic sort of lens flare sort of example. You're looking at on the right. We're looking at this sort of this beautiful thing. You've seen some that are funny because you look at the shape and it's the exact same shape of the iris on the imaging system. <laughs> and what happens is every time there is a new camera that people don't understand, we get a new kind of UFO. Yep. Back when we had the uh, the little like the 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 digital cameras that had the long closures, I remember somebody sending when I worked for James Randy photos of them inside like a pyramid and these light streaks. We get the light streaks were a big thing. Like remember the light streaks? Yeah. And that was anytime you had an LED or light in the background and you bumped the camera, it would cause this light streak. And so, but there was entire boards filled with people talking about these light streak phenomena. Well, you would see with the same because. 
Oh, okay. sorry, I, I didn't mean to cut you off, but but specifically, yeah. I remember installing a, you know a whole bunch of uh, cameras that had a bunch of infrared lights on them, and and uh, the first time I encountered the phenomenon, it, I was like, I don't know what I'm looking at because uh, uh, it, it's an infrared image. There's a motion alert at 2 a.m., and I kid you not, there are uh, five or six lights in formation moving and then they move swooping straight towards the camera. And I, I spent months until finally enough other people had brought up the same phenomenon on these particular brand of cameras before I figured out that, or found out that, yeah, when a spider is doing a spider web, he starts with one initial thread that will reflect back the six LED lights that are on this camera and they will blow in the wind and they will swoop in this awesome, creepy, strange thing. And now I see them all the time and I, and I, 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 I give, I give two craps about it. Yeah. But and exactly in those kind of things, like you're a smart guy who's been exposed to this, but you just, you're looking at, you have the advantage of looking at the camera, knowing this, if you were asked to diagnose this thing, didn't owning the camera, whatever, it would be really hard without talking to other people, understand this stuff. We had, there was like shooters, which were like these rods, they're called like rods, you know, they're like, oh, I'll get this rod. And that was a bug flying across at, in a, with a long exposure. It was, you could literally, you know, it was a bug. You Sometimes you zoom in, you could see the wings. That was a long exposure bug. There was the streaks. Yeah, there's an example of one of those right there. It was, that's literally the wing pattern, literally the wing pattern of a bug. Um, and then you would get orbs, remember orbs? Yep. yep. Orbs were like, oh, in graveyards and places like this, these floating entities, like literally dust motes. Or, 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 or uh, I, just... I, I think some of them were literal fog, but but orbs were popular kind of unsurprisingly when flash photography was very important for digital yeah. cameras. All of a sudden we're seeing orbs all over the place. Um, yeah. I think another element that folds into our modern conversation about this sort of stuff is like many things, a commentary on our modern era where you see like, oh, well, well, the government is releasing information on UFOs or, or, or UAPs, right? And the commentary is, oh, we're so distracted with our vast increase of uh, stimuli that, that now there's so much entertainment available. There's so much social media available. We are constantly able to talk to each other whenever we want. There's no more of these natural barriers that here's how distracted we are. The government is releasing information that UFOs are real and we can't even be bothered to care. And, and that's, a, you know, it is, it is a, a, a way that we can prove a thing that is obviously true, that we have a lot more ways that we can interact with things, but do it in a new way you know i think like that is that is part of it if we're looking at at modern um modern yeah. reasons why i and i think what the the government release of stuff of this you know like a one senator or somebody gets to do this like, i think it's sincere i don't think oh we'll distract them like, i think these are people who don't understand because and i don't follow this anywhere nearly as much as i have but whatever they've done that i've never heard them like well, we're going to bring in the top engineer no. and CEO of Raytheon and ask them about this because it's like the last thing in the world the companies who make these imaging systems want. They would rather, it's like back in the day when, you know, the Air Force, like, ah, I saw a UFO. Do we want them to tell them that it was one of our spy satellites or balloon? No. Yeah, UFO. Do we want to tell people that there's a defect in our imaging systems that can easily do this? No, we won't tell them that, even though. The physics is clear. You, you know what it reminds me of is the, the single most compelling case against the moon landing being faked is a technical video, and, and hopefully Bryce could find it, but uh, it was a, 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 a filmographer, a cinematographer, who explained that there's only two ways to do long-form broadcast video. Um, and uh, physically, if you're doing film, there's only so much room you have on the platter to do film, and then it runs out. And the duration of the broadcast is impossible with the technology that existed at the time I, to, to film I, and then show as a video. Not true. I really had a problem with that video. Oh, really? I could, uh, well, tell, were, tell, tell me yeah, more about I watched, this. There were like three. Like, there were, I remember vaguely remember there were like three other ways you could have done it that they didn't address, and it was a failure of imagination on their part. Um, a film reel is, is, is X wide, right? 
Okay. What happened, the big thing that happened in film, the change was moving to the platter system. And the platter can be any size you want, okay? You can also you can also do a sync system, right? You can do a sync system where you do not need, you can do this with 1969 technology. Again, moon landing was real as far as I know, folks. But 1969 technology, you can do a thing with two projectors and you can have one start where the other steps off where basically what it does is it can do like a gradient of fade in, fade out. There's all these different ways in which you can do it. To me, it was a really, really, there's also uh, like fluorofluor, hexafluorocarbon. Like you could have put people in sort of hexafluorocarbon environment in those suits and it would have looked like, I, I just, I'm like, I can name several ways this could have been faked and I was frustrated because I don't think telling people like, well, the technology didn't exist at the time. Well, again, you know, what, what's stated in the NSA and the CIA when it comes to imaging stuff and things like that, there are certain things that clearly they couldn't do so. I, I, I just, sorry, I, I was just very frustrated by that. Because he uses like, oh, what if they tried to slow it down? Like, no, that would be the way I would do it. Like, yeah, you need 530 feet of film, which you use a platter system for. You don't need it. That's, that's my problem. Like, oh, the film magazine is as big as a Volkswagen. Um, yeah, no, you can shoot this through, put it on a platter, spin it up through whatever you want. That was, that was my problem of like weak skepticism. You think we could fake the moon landing Right now, like, can we get the equipment that they had back then and try to fake it? Problem is, you're going to have to send some, and even back then it would have been hard. You're going to have to send something to, if we had faked it, if we had faked it, the yeah. Russians would have been all over that. They would have been all over it. That would have been, you know, because that would have been the biggest coup of the century was to point out that the big Western imperialists had to fake this thing. Yeah. Um, and then you have to get into really convoluted conspiracy theories. That's why so we had to bring in Kubrick. It? Exactly. Yeah, Kubrick, the joke is that Kubrick, Kubrick is the one who faked the moon landing, but he was such a purist, he insisted on shooting it on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, the reason why you know it wasn't Kubrick is because uh, it wasn't three and a half hours. Yeah, exactly. No, it was long. Uh, wait, 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 my, my, my point that I was getting at is uh, when you look at enough technical stuff, you realize that the easier way to do it would be to go to the moon. Yeah. That's my moon, point. Yeah, and yeah. I'm sorry if that didn't come across, but, uh, but, no, that, you, I found but I it to be... my, my issue was with that, with that video that, cause it was, to me was, it won't do the job. They think that it does because they created very easy straw men that the believers that it was a hoax could point at. And to yeah. me that that's bad skepticism. Cause it's like, they'll just go like, Oh yeah, well, here's a platter fooled. You guys are wrong. It's, it's fake. It's like, all right. Yeah. But, but I, yeah, I think, I think, idea. yeah, it's, it's Occam's razor, Brian. I agree. Although, you know, Thomas Jefferson, you know, when they talked about meteors, you know, I would, you know, some re some prof professors or whatever at the time were saying like, you know, hey, we think these things, these rocks might be falling from, you know, the heavens. And he's like, I'd sooner believe a couple of Yankees are pulling our leg than rocks are falling from the heavens. <laughs> well, it turned out meteors are real. Hold that L, Tommy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thomas L. Yeah. Jefferson. Yeah. In your face, boy. You guys have time for a, a quick mystery? Yeah. Sure. I want Detectives Bryce and Detective Brian. Okay. Reporting for duty. Hello. I need Justin to check his email. Okay. I'm going to explain the situation here. Got my goggles okay. on. I'm scoping out. I called you guys here because I've been working for 25 years on my research project. I've got this cell culture. It's in a very important cell culture. It's worth a tremendous amount of money, and they're all dead. They're all dead. All my cells have been killed. Well, I mean, how, how long were these cells around for? 25 years. 20, ooh. Uh, mm. Are they the same cells? Have you heard of the ship of Theseus? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like maybe they well, got no, replaced I mean, I over time. In, I, I, I kept them in a freezer, guys. I know what I'm doing. I'm a science guy. Mm. Are these see that on the wall? See that wall? Science guy. Yeah. Are are these particularly important cells, or are they just precious Very to important. you emotionally? The, both. Both. How many? How many cells are we talking about? Are we talking about you know the the end of a of of a, of a needlepoint pen, or are we talking about? I a think whole you're missing the point. I want to find out what happened to them. Well, I, I just need to know how how big of a magnifying glass I need to order. Wait, and I mean, also, like, were they stolen or they just died? 
Yeah. Are there any? Because like, like, like my, were, my I, daughter had a betta fish and it died. Sometimes they were die. sabotaged. <gasps> sabotage. So I kept them in the freezer. Woke up. Came to work. Went in there. No power. Nothing. Cells were dead. Um, so somebody unplugged a refrigerator. Unplugged it. Nope. It's plugged into the wall. I have a sign here that says "Do not unplug." Okay, but 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 do do uh, uh, let's pretend. Uh, hey, do you happen to have your electric bill? Can we see if maybe electricity stopped arriving I at your place? I paid my electric bill. I paid my electric bill. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I, here, okay, Brian. Here, listen. Here, here, yeah, here, here. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's huddle. I'm thinking. Right, he's missing some cells. Maybe it's a spreadsheet. Maybe Microsoft Excel came in, said, hey, he's got all the cells. We've got all these commas that we can separate them with. Let's, it's, and then it's a high. Bryce, Bryce, it's a high. Uh, I understand that you did not begin at the biology unit, but as the head right. of, 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 of SBU, uh, special biology unit. Mm -hmm. uh, Thanks for having me again. I'm, I'm uh, glad no, 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 I'm, I, Look, uh, your engineering background is great. I That's think right. you might have a little bit of a bias and you might not be thinking of the right kind of oh. cell. Can I, can I say you talk to some suspects? Please. Uh, yes. Uh, good cop, bad cop. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll figure out who's who. Uh, bring him in. Slam, uh, slams door, clap, clap. opens door. Okay, uh, now let him in. Uh, who, hey, who do we, who do we got here? It's -a me, hey, Johnny Strombolini. Oh, jo Mr. Strombolini, thank you so much for taking the time. Oh, I love him. Uh, to talk to you. Yes, oh, very good. Do you know, you know this, this Wait, bridge? No. <laughs> Sorry, I just sometimes I just want to sing. Yeah, with the moon and and so on. Uh huh. Yeah. Yes. Did, I'm you, just gonna crack my knuckles over here yeah. over Bryce's shoulder. Oh, now, now, don't listen to him, sweetie. Oh, Have you seen guy, this bridge? Tough guy over here. You're a real, uh, you boxing man, huh? Mm. I'm, I'm gonna roll up my <laughs> sleeves over okay, here. Okay. All now, dark, right. Now, hey, I like you. You're very, you're very, you're a nice very man. Very careful like taking you. off my glasses, setting oh. them off to the side so as not to get blood on them. Oh yes. Now, Mr. Strombolini. Yeah, nothing more intimidating. Nothing intimidating than having to squit than Brian. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. I, I don't know. I didn't know that there was good Bryce. cop, bad cop, and jerk cop offering commentary off to the side on our TV. <laughs> I just want to say, I just want to say, uh, your eyes are so small, like two little capers. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't. I couldn't. I couldn't. I see couldn't you. hear you. My glasses were off. That's gonna be a great thing where it'll see like the little bit bad cop takes off the glasses and squints and starts punching his partner. <laughs> <laughs> Come um, here, you son of a bitch! Pow! All right, listen up, Strombolini. But <laughs> but we know what you've been up to. Oh no! What 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 are you with me? I had to be so mean. I had to be so mad. <laughs> Uh, I'm just uh, trying to do my job. Yeah, uh, what is your job? Let's start there. I work here. Doing what? But doing what? Hey, Papa. Oh, you want to think you're some kind of big, strong, important man? Oh, everything around here. Who do you think makes sure everything is put in place? Johnny Strambolini. That's who. You're a janitor. I have worked here for over 25 <laughs> years. Okay. All right. So you're a janitor, Strombolini. And, uh, yes. Uh, uh, English, uh, not my first language. <laughs> you don't you say, say what? A janitor? <laughs> Custodian. Because I don't, uh, in the old country, different word. Go. Yes. Uh, you, you clean the floors. Uh, yes. Many other things. But, oh, for example. The counter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, where were you at the time that these cells died? I, I, uh, that is the not. You you <laughs> ask me. You asking me. I, how am I supposed to I'm know? I'm gonna punch you in the face. Who am I? I'm the baddest cop ever. Oh, oh, I swear. Oh, George, I did. Oh. Bryce, you hold me back. I'm about to punch <laughs> this guy. Here we go. Uh, let's 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 cool it down. Oh, let's cool. You know what? I'm gonna take a break. Let's Pocket pasta. Oh. Ha! No! 
<laughs> you know what? I'm going to let that one slide. The fact that you assaulted an officer in the middle of a questioning. Let's you go. said you're going to beat me up. I apologize. Let me clean it. <laughs> okay, you know what? Johnny I'm gonna, Strumpelini I'm leave cleaning you guys up. Alone cleaning for just up. A moment, cleaning up. And you guys oh, can figure this out. I'm gonna put, All right, here we I'm, go. I'm, 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 I'm going to put the pasta pop, back click. in my pocket. Mr. Strumpelini, are you yes. familiar with this fridge, this refrigerator unit? Oh, yes. Very important fridge. Yeah. Have yes, you? Yes, yes, yes. No. Very, very important sign. Honor the fridge. Can you read the sign? Do you? Ah, hey, oh. sorry, Bryce. Uh, I was gonna grab a coffee. I didn't know if you wanted one as well. I'm just checking in. You, you're on my list, Strombolini. Uh, whatever you're telling me. I thought Bryce, we had it made up. Uh, I don't I know. I thought we had involved the characters, and that we were okay. I, yeah. I picked up. I cleaned up my pocket pasta. Cream sugar. Can I get a? Can I get a pink drink? Uh, I'll find out what that is. Okay. See you Thanks. later. Thank you. I, uh, I'm pointing you at my eyes. You should use it a Google. At your eyes. Use it a Google. What? That's what I do. Use what? When my little bambinos ask for so many things, I have no idea what is a fortnight. Wait a minute. Yeah, just now occurred to me. I just had the strangest thought. Uh huh. Well, it's like I don't know what a pink drink is. Uh huh. And if I was, you know, being careless, I might walk over to a random refrigerator, look for something pink, think that's what he meant. And then I might have brought it to Bryce, and he oh. might have drank it, not knowing it was incredibly important intellectual property that belongs to Cryocorp. What kind of a ethnic stereotype are you think I am? <laughs> I'm so stupid, my head made of the meatballs that I would go in and drink the things that are in the fridge. I can read this sign. That is offensive. Pocket pasta, ha! Oh, <laughs> okay. All right. I <laughs> catch his pocket pasta, converts, uh, uh, starts oh, threading okay. it uh, <laughs> into macrame. Uh, Bryce, you know what? I was reading articles. Uh, 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 okay. Uh, I we we never really got a handle on what kind of cells these were. Yeah, we couldn't really get any questions out really in either direction. Yeah, no. but but but, but uh, I was reading a science article that says that people are like. I uh, tell you what, I listened to the two of you talk. So annoying, <laughs> as annoying as that buzzing. Oh my God, so annoying. But, but, but sorry, did you say but? Did you say buzzing? But you, your voice. Oh, be, 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 be. oh no, I did that. Hit the that. Yeah, in my. My head needs to stop. Bryce, but, I, I, have you read these articles where, like, they're fabricating... Have you seen a niece? Uh, have you heard <laughs> about a niece? Uh, <laughs> like, fabricating meats? Like, uh, clo uh, oh, like, sure, like, fake. like, with stem cells and whatnot? But, oh, you think this is... Uh, uh, Mr. Strombolini, Mr. Oh, are oh you politically God. motivated, Mr. Strombolini? Wait a minute, wait Mr. a minute, Mr. Strombolini, Bryce, who are right, you with? Who are you associated right, with? Okay, okay, all right. Very suspicious. Mr. Strombolini, yes. if you are going to describe your favorite ethnic type of food, what type would that be? Well, oh. <laughs> uh, maybe uh, a little uh, chicken parmesan. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh -huh. I'm not settled. Maybe a little uh, empty pasta salad. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> Johnny Strombolini, favorite. Oh, my mama used to come me and they say, Johnny, Johnny. It's spelled with a G, so you know it's really Italian. <laughs> he said, Johnny, Johnny. Oh, I have a, I have a little pasta fajol. Oh, I love a little pasta fajol. How would you feel about, uh, you know, because... Uh, Do you have any pasta fajol? Why would, uh, you, why would I, you ask Johnny Strombolini about this unless you were going to have some? I have this unmarked package that I brought back in after I left, and uh, it is labeled spicy meatball. Would you like to eat a spicy meatball? You know, my, my father once brought me in. He said, Johnny, sit upon my knee. And he said, never, <laughs> ever in your life will a strombolini ever trust a spicy meatball from the hands of a white. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? You Sounds think it. that you're going to spit on my father's grave? 
Put it away. Ha! Okay, all right, all right. Uh, Bryce, I'm gonna, I hand Second you the box. Second bucket full of pasta. I hand ha! you the box. I'll put it, I'll knowing put... that you're less white than me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to, I'll be back outside. Yeah. Uh, you said coffee, no sugar, right? That's, okay, okay. Right, that's right. a, that, Hey, that's a spicy meatball. Oh, my now, God. I'm going to name this guy Mr. Buzzing. <laughs> oh, he's so annoying. As annoying as the buzzing. Now, now Mr. Strumbly, do you hear that buzzing now? Is it still buzzing? No. What? Wait, wait, wait. Take, take out the pasta sauce out of your ears, boy. Do you hear a buzzing? Uh, well, no, I, just my internal voice. Uh, 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 uh. Well, now you do, because I was doing it, but not otherwise. When I start talking to you, I stop yeah. buzzing. When, the buzzing stops. Uh, when did when did it first stop? When did what stop? The, the buzzing. Did you do? Did, did the buzzing stop on its own? We didn't did, start the fire. We didn't. <laughs> it was always burning. Oh, the world's been turning. Oh. Hey, Bryce, uh, just checking in. Have you, yeah. have you tried Very to walk the meatball again? Because I'm it, pretty sure he can't resist. I think that I think that the, the uh -huh. secret cultured cells were meatball cells. Uh, so I, think we're, uh, I gotta go. I gotta okay, go. We're, I gotta we're go. almost cracking this. We're almost cracking this, I think. You, you, you could barely tell the difference. <laughs> Between what I was, did you hear when I, I was know, buzzing? And then when, it, when it, he was a talking, because they were the exact same. <laughs> so uh, the buzzing, did you did you stop the buzzing, Mr. Strombolini? Did I stop the buzzing? Did you do anything to stop well, the I mean, buzzing? I, I, if, you were, if you were listening to this buzzing, uh, then you would, uh, you would also, you would also stop it. Sure. Well, uh, did, uh, uh. When was the last time you cleaned this fridge then, Mr. Strombolini? I do not clean the fridge. I am the janitor. Oh. I do not clean. There is a sign. I do not clean. Uh, yes. Uh, the sign. Do, what's that sign? I, just, I can't read it. I'm so far. You're so close. Can it you says, it? do not disturb inside uh, the, uh, the, 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 the refrigerator. Great. Okay. Uh, but the buzzing so the loud. Buzzing, the buzzing, and the buzzing so loud. How, how, the, uh, the, wh, wh, did did something happen when the buzzing stopped? Was there like a pop? Was I stopped there... it. You stopped it. Yes. Well, how, well, why'd you do that? So loud. It's so loud. Uh, 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 uh. At what but point how, do you stop it? Did, did, oh, you do. You think you're so high and mighty? You're gonna look down on me, just a humble ethnic stereotype. <laughs> I work day in and day out. Yeah. It's, 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 it's. Do you it's, think all the first generation Italians <laughs> don't make their way to America these days? That I am a relic of a bygone age? No, well, I'm not. No, no, you're. The Strambolinis may not be first, but we will be the best. You're, you're really carrying this bit for sure. Uh, now, what did you, did you do? What did you do? How did you stop it? Did you, did you, did you break? Did you? I look at the did, plug okay. and I kick at the plug. Oh. Okay. okay. I look at the plug. Yeah. I say, I bet you within you plug, there is all of the buzzing. And I went, yeah, and I kicked it. Oh. Uh, you shouldn't have done that. I don't think you should have done that, maybe. Should have done what? Uh, kick the plug to, uh, to stop. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I should live in audio torture. You could have for the rest of my life. Talk to somebody. The rest of my uh, life. This is the like, discrimination. Okay, okay, okay. Two uh, mocha Looks latte like you all cracked the case here. Uh, <laughs> you, you cracked the case here. So uh, what happened was uh, Real Real Life Institute, <laughs> the Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, had a cell culture that had been sitting in a freezer for 25 years. There had been a problem where the freezer was making a beeping noise. So they... They called the manufacturers, can you fix this? Said, yeah, but we can't get anybody out soon enough to go do that. So they put a sign on the, the plug that says, please do not unplug this refrigerator. Apparently a janitor really didn't like the beeping. To his credit, he did not unplug it. He went to the circuit breaker and cut off the power to it. <gasps> uh, ladies and gentlemen, now in public, uh, I want to remind everyone that I was portraying a character who unfairly and quite racistly assumed mm -hmm. that Joey Strombolini Johnny Johnny, Johnny with a G uh, so you know yeah, he's really yeah. Italian that uh, that he that the cells that he ate were 
cultured uh, lab grown meats yes. in the form of a meatball. Mm -hmm. That's and let me also say that uh, while Johnny Strombolini is a colorful character, uh, uh, that these stereotypes are something that we should take seriously and understand. Uh, but throwing pocket pasta in Brian's face is something that I've drawn from my real life. <laughs> What uh, uh, now? Uh, so do they have to just start over. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't don't know. There wasn't a lot of details about the sources, but they've sued the company, the the, the janitorial company that provided the services, and they're asking them for like a million dollars because. Oh, it's, jeez, it's, Louise. It's, wow. Yeah, uh, a bit more to the story, but uh, yeah. Um, whoopsie. Yeah. Well, the picks are at the end of the podcast. You oh. ask Bryce. <laughs> I, yeah, I got a, I got a pick here. Uh, uh, I've got the the PlayStation Game Pass sort of thing, mm. and uh, they just added uh, last week or so uh, Far Cry Six, the most recent Far Cry game. And uh, guess what? It's more Far Cry. Uh, if you like to shoot. Um, unnamed bad guys from a not real uh Latin a generic Latin American, <laughs> Latin American yeah. country yeah uh, though i am having i'm having a bit of of dissonance with it brian you you've played a little bit of far cry 6 right uh oh yeah yeah I, I, as a matter of fact um uh the best far cries are the ones that i almost never finish because i just am enjoying it so much that i just want to keep collecting things yeah. uh but there uh, and there's actually a delightful easter egg that i'll share with you after you ask your question sure i uh I, i'm having a, a little bit of dissonance because the guy that uh uh Giancarlo es Esposito. Giancarlo G Esposito, yeah, yeah. Uh, he, his dick, the dictator. His name is Anton Castillo. Oh, and and you want to cheer for him? And there's graffiti everywhere that says "Kill Castillo" and "F Castillo," and uh, everyone is talking about God, killing. This sounds Castillo. like a dream come true. Uh, if I could play a game that was Jesus just like Christ. F Brushwood. <laughs> oh, oh, I thought you were like, like, oh, this is great. All these fantasies I've had about killing Bryce, like, no, can finally no, be no. brought to life. <laughs> to go around and like. Like because Brushwood is a very strange name. It is. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's that's a little weird. And that part's I'm going I'm going like, ah. but uh, but otherwise you <laughs> otherwise you shoot people. Uh, but now it looks like fun times. Yeah, yeah. Far Cry Six. So uh, uh, two of my favorite Easter eggs were I believe in Far Cry Four, mm -hmm. uh, where you take on pagan men. Uh, ostensibly, you're being brought in by this, you know, uh, uh, this uh, m metro uh, 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 European person in um, uh, uh, Tibet, Tibet, and he says, "Well, sit down for just a moment. I'll be right back, and we'll, you know, make you very powerful, and this will all belong to you." And then, after a bit, you go snooping around, and you <laughs> go on the whole adventure that is the game, and then uh, it ends up being, you know, 45 hours of gameplay. But if you actually sit there for 10 full minutes, then he comes back in. And he's like, oh, thank you for being patient. I'm very sorry about all this here. Uh, the, the whole country is yours now. Have a good day. Yeah. Uh, they do a similar Easter egg in this one. Do you know about it? Can I spoil it? Uh, I Yeah, I guess so. I don't, I, hmm. I'm trying uh, to think when, when that would have been. When you get in a boat, if you just keep sailing away from the country, eventually it fades out and it, rises and it comes back you're on a beach in miami sipping a mai tai oh, fun. you just left and are having a great life oh interesting <laughs> i'll have to keep an eye out for that because a lot of the a lot of the boat rides i've been on i'm not too far in but hmm, that's fun yeah, yeah anyway far cry 6 uh check it out if you like those shooty games I, uh, it's great. It's yeah. It feels like uh, uh, cause it's they it's a shooting game and they spend a lot of time trying to make it feel good. And so I kind of had the idea that like, oh, maybe these Far Cry games are just Call of Duty for people who don't want to play online. <laughs> well, and also there's good puzzle solving things where it's like um, uh, each each attack that you do is like a self contained outpost and. You know, at first you go in guns a blazing and then you get surprised when you get overwhelmed or whatever. And then you are trained to, you know, very cleverly snipe, uh, 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 scope everything out. Sure. Um, and uh, the crafting elements are excellent. It's it's I, I, I just love Far Cry might be one of my all time favorite games. Full stop. Yeah. There you go. Oh, they also, they also have actual cockfighting. 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and and, and it's done like in an over the top Street Fighter style. In fact, I'll, I'll make Far Cry 6 my pick as well. Oh, there we go. Justin? Uh, a much discussed program on the home box office network is The Idol, starring Lily Rose Depp and pop star The Weeknd. Uh, any kind of show with that sort of buzz on it, uh, mostly reviled. Uh, was something that I definitely needed to see. Uh, it is from Sam Levinson, the uh, uh, son of Barry and the creator of Euphoria, another HBO show. That one is a hit. This one is canceled. And uh, the biggest debate was whether or not they were going to allow it the dignity of saying that it was going to be a limited run series. Uh, I don't know if I can recommend the show. There are some <laughs> interesting ideas. Lily Rose Depp, I think, is going to have a fine career ahead of her. Uh, the Weeknd certainly bit off more than he could chew acting wise. Uh, the writing is incoherent, but it is interesting if you pair it with all of the behind the scenes stuff that was written about it, uh, because it seems as if the main plot line of the movie and specifically the ending uh, was something that was almost being written as they were shooting it. And it is meta commentary of the creators, specifically The Weeknd and Sam Levinson, fighting with HBO. Uh -huh. um, so, is that an interesting perspective to view the story through at all? It's short. It's a five episode oh. thing. So, uh, certainly, it was more interesting than than some of the more uh, boring parts of the show, which are pretty much the first three episodes. Oh. Uh, there is a lot of sex. The two people that are having all the sex have zero chemistry, uh, and it gets it gets weird. I, I think there's a lot of commentary on it. Uh, but that being said, there's some fun performances uh, uh, sprinkled in there, and like there are some ideas where you're like, "Oh, that's kind of interesting." In fact, <laughs> I just watched the finale last night, but there's some ideas in it where. Like you think like, oh, this could actually be developed into something cooler. And one of them is uh, the fact that The weekend has apparently in his cult leader kind of aesthetic gathered these other people with him. Not mm -hmm. unlike Manson and his family and cool. not unlike Manson and his family. Uh, you know, if you're familiar with that story, uh, Charles Manson moved in to uh, one of the Beach Boys house uh, while the Beach Boys were really, really big, before oh, wow. all the all the murders happened, like this is when he was just a scene stir in that in that hippie world. Mm -hmm. Um, and then in the in the finale, during this one big thing, uh, Eli Roth, who plays kind of like the head of a a Ticketmaster or Live Nation sort of thing, so of the big decision makers of of this troubled pop starlet's career, he's one of them. Just goes like. Oh my God, this is like when the Manson family moved into the Beach Boys house. Oh my God. It's good writing. It's subtle. Uh, <laughs> it's subtle. <laughs> Mac from Always Sunny would approve. Yeah. There's, there's nothing confusing about that. Nothing yeah. confusing. Can't no. Write, you can't write subtext without text. Um, but yeah, so I, I don't know if I can recommend it as a straight ahead thing, but if you want to watch a disaster that I would say is probably among the contenders to get pulled off a platform that doesn't want to pay royalties, <laughs> uh, uh, boy, would I suggest you watch the idol suit. There you go. Andrew. I have, man. Um, I, I'm thinking of things I want to talk good about. <laughs> so, uh, I, I've, I've had a frustrating experience of some streaming shows and stuff where, man, um, anyhow, I thing I've been using lately, which I like, is uh, Blinkist. Blinkist is a service that provides these like 20 to 30 minute summaries of books. And I'm actually using it after I read a book. If it's on Blinkist, I will go to Blinkist and listen to a summary of the book. It is a great way they work with, as far as I understand, is they work with the authors or the publishers and stuff. So they do this, you know with their cooperation, um, I believe. And so uh, I think it's a neat format because, you know, some ideas are too big to compress into 20 or 30 minutes, but sometimes you read a book and you go, man, there's a couple of cool key, key takeaways here. I'd like that. And I just think that I've enjoyed using it with books I've already read and then going back and listen to that. So it's just like a great, like, let's catch you up to speed on what this was about. 
So uh, Blinkist, if you look around, you can find discount codes and stuff for it. You can do like 80 bucks for a year. They have what they call Blinks. They break a thing down into that and you know, not will not replace reading a book to be sure. But man, a lot of times you just want to get context on something. I find it pretty useful. Well, and uh, that's also in keeping with our recent discussions about part of the way to really solidify memories is repetition. And you don't need to reread the entire book each time, mm -hmm. but it probably would be good to reread a synopsis in order to really internalize everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So I've enjoyed that. Um, and it also one of the things that impressed me too was they do like a seven day trial. And then uh, I'm like, well, if I want to cancel, it's really easy to cancel on their website. And I know that sounds silly, but there are major newspapers that you have to call a person to cancel, which frustrates me to no end. It is one of the most dishonest, dirty sort of things where you have to call a number. To, like if I look into a service, right now every time I look into a service, I, I look to see how hard will it be for me to cancel it. That they make me go through a bunch of steps. I know uh, one that's not for me and two, man, uh, they have a lot of people losing or leaving and they're trying to keep you in. So it looked like a pretty straightforward thing to do. Nice. Blinkist. That's my pick. Uh, hope you all had fun. It's been weird. Hey, look at you, everybody. Oh, apparently gives you a guest account you can give somebody, so. Oh, nice. Very nice. Uh, all right, we can take a short break. Trade it for a blue sky invite. <laughs> <laughs> look, I'm sorry, I'm gonna send one to you, I promise. Uh, okay, we'll take a short break I'll here. I'll do it as and, piss frog. Uh, <laughs> Come back for a little bit after this frog fan account. Number one fan. Number one. Did you see? I see you had a new uh, Photoshop, I believe, in their Discord. Oh, really? Let me go see if I can pull it up. Yeah, go ahead. You gonna take a bathroom break? He wants to see Piss Frog. Oh, not if there's a Piss Frog photo. <laughs> oh, I gotta find it. See this? I'm sure. Well, I'm gonna go to my. Get back. I'm gonna go to my frog free bath. <laughs> okay. I'm. I see. I'm not logged in over there. I'd have to. Log in. Only real frogs know. Real heads know where the pee is at. <laughs> in the balls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Diamond Lab? No. Free show? No. Fan made? Please be in fan made. That's where it's. Uh, there we go. I think this is one of your wrestlemen. Oh, yes. <laughs> And then here come that boy, oh piss, what up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we love a piss frog, don't we, folks? We stand a piss frog. We stand a pissing frog. <laughs> piss drinking, <laughs> piss guzzling frog. Uh, oh, um, so they are uh, doing, uh, they're, they're doing F1 this weekend. And one of the things that is showing up on track is this car for a, APXGP team. Uh, I don't know what these words are, man. Uh, this is the car that they are filming for the Apple TV show, or for the Apple TV movie um, about F1. Brad Pitt uh, is starring in an Apple TV movie. Ah. Uh, that one of the, the drivers is actually producing. And so they actually have the car and uh, one of the garages uh, decked out at the uh, at the track uh this week and so we've got photos of them all piling in i'm trying to find there's one where you can see they've even got the garage the the garage with these like banners above it and um uh uh they've they've even like I, got brad pitt's face photoshopped in there like uh, uh, i don't think people are really ready for the world we're entering into when did I sent, I think Justin, did I send you the article on like Amazon Prime and their, you know, they spent like Amazon Prime spent like $7 billion last year on content, 7 billion. Jeez Louise. Of course, you know, you look in it and it's, it's an Apple, when Apple launches Vision Pro, and I'm not saying it's going to happen next year because they're going to wait for wider adoption. They're going to spend billions of dollars on content. Yes. More money will be spent on content than ever has been spent before. And you're going to see, you're going to get Ridley Scott shooting 3D movies. You're going to get just, you know, uh, like, like that. You know what I'm saying? He specifically. But right. I think you're, because like the fact that, what do you think Apple had to pay to do this? Yeah. And it's insane. 
I mean, they, it, I think it also gives credence to, you know, uh, in the next year and a half, we're going to see some musical chairs and, and if not some out and out acquisitions on the studio side, uh, and, and looming around and you've heard rumors for a couple different, you know, uh, uh, uh acquisition targets of, of Apple just out and out buying one of these major players. Um, whether or not that happens, I certainly think that, uh, the idea of a gigantic outlay of money for specific 3d specific content is going to be a big deal. I, I would be amazed if they bought a studio. I would be real. I heard somebody say, oh, Disney. I'm like, one, antitrust. They would never go through. They don't want the headache. Two, it's like, there is, it's the most, to me, it's a very, the studios are not not efficient. They basically, a studio is a bank that makes bets. That's what a studio is. It makes, yeah. it, you know, it's a bank that makes a bet on a thing. Apple's the biggest, is literally like the biggest bank in the world, you know, pr biggest per privately held bank in the world. Um, it comes down to can we they've made a lot of mistakes i think with apple tv content how much they're learning i don't know some of the stuff is actually really oh silo i just finished silo so talk about that i love that i'm going to pitch that next week as uh my favorite because i thought that was that was i think everything working right for for apple tv mm -hmm. but what i say is like yeah maybe i don't know i don't i don't see them doing that but also like as a model though content whatever if they do the must-see event is this amazing, you know, 3D movie that you have to get an Apple Vision Pro to watch, it's going to drive interest and conversation in it. It may not be a thing that directly translates. It's like Amazon Prime tries to create content so you'll keep coming back to Prime. Um, I don't know. I've just been like, I love Peripheral. Nobody saw that though. Do you guys watch Peripheral? No, I, I that was the I, Chloe Grace Moretz one. Yeah, the the yeah, yeah. Based on a uh, uh, Philip K. Dick story. Uh, a uh, Gibson story, but yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I enjoyed that. But then, like Rings of Power, like they showed the drop off of people who started and then didn't finish it, and it was huge. Yeah. You only like thirty five percent of people finished that series, so there was no growth, and it was a drop off, and. Most exp and then you know you look at Citadel, the Russo brothers thing. Has any seen Citadel? Anybody? Anybody? Oh, oh not yet. The oh. like most expensive television product in history. Next is like Rings of Power. Oof. Mm. Is it out even? It. Oh, it's, it's out. Oh yeah, it came out in April. Ooh, yeah. that sign. <laughs> yeah, uh. yeah. That's uh, the quote, my good friend. Johnny, the uh, with the G. <laughs> yeah, that's a, not a good. <laughs> All right, let's uh, do some after things. You guys want to do some after things? Ready, ready. Let's go. Yes. Okay. Uh, then, Andrew, I'll count you in to start the after things program in three, two. Hello, and welcome to the after things podcast. I'm Andrew Mean, joined by Justin Robert Young. Sir. Bryce. The mercenary Castillo. G -g 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 hello. That's me shooting hellos at you. Hello, 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 hello. And Brian Peacemaker Rushwood. Wait, Not to wait. be confused with the IP, the Peacemaker. I meant he's a gentle soul. Wait, uh, what was the phrase? Uh, kill Castillo? Down with Castillo? Yeah. Oh, yes. The, the, kill Castillo. Castillo. F Castillo <laughs> in, the, in Far Cry. Um, so we were talking a bit about what's going to happen, and we don't know, but it's interesting to think about a lot of media consolidations because what's happening right now is you have the some of the different talent unions and writers union stuff strikes are the looming negotiations and stuff because we're entering this new era of streaming and other ways it's not as straightforward as you make a movie it goes to the box office and then the studio rips you off by telling you how much they made it for versus not um or then it was tv film these things are getting much more complicated because of streaming because streaming is a flat fee which makes it hard and that was like kind of the cable model Similar to the cable model, and now it's even kind of getting more complex. So there's a lot of negotiations, a lot of conversations about what's going on there. There's obviously the talk of what AI is going to do. But you have these big players now where Apple comes in and says, okay, we're going to do Apple TV, and Apple is spending 
enormous sounds of money. You know, Amazon apparently spent seven billion dollars last year on content. Seven billion dollars, which still I can't wrap my head around that. Um, and now they're actually trying to do. They want more detailed accounting now because they're not happy with the results they got. If they've actually been asking the producers to show them. Like, hey, can you give us specifically, like, tell us exactly what you spent your money on? Because we're not seeing the return we think we should be getting. Versus Apple, which, you know, Apple's the largest. Apple passed a $3 trillion, $3 trillion valuation. $3 trillion valuation. Their cash on hand is enormous. Their cash on hand is greater than the value of probably every studio put together. And they're getting into this game more and more. We talked about this before with, like, the Apple Vision Pro. They see a consumption device on the horizon in AR, VR, spatial computing, and they know that they want to get you to spend money every month, a subscription service. They want, it, they want you to be, one, have a device like this and your iPhone and everything else and be willing to pay them every month for a reoccurring thing because they can only sell you so many devices. So what does it look like to you all? There's a really good article. Uh, I'm, I'm going to post it in the chat here from Wall Street Journal talking about how expensive uh, what we think of as TV's golden era was, you know, and, and everything from, you know, the bear to your Ted Lasso's uh, to your successions and so on. Um, uh, if, if, if you're able to I don't know if you're able to scroll through it, but only Netflix and Amazon seem to be deeply committed to investing in new properties. Um, the, I, 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 boy, everybody else, like even uh, whatever the rental fee is for, for the show that I did for National Geographic, uh, hacking the system, even Disney Plus uh, lost interest in continuing to pay that rental fee to have it on the National Geographic vertical, even though it seemed to have uh, performed pretty well uh, and was on the front page of the Nat Geo thing. Uh, basically, I think it boils down to, uh, boy, did did it look like it was just raining all the time two years ago during the pandemic? And boy, is it not doing so now? Like in terms of what? Well, in terms of humans interest in seeing excellent television and consuming all of it for money. Well, I mean, that's not the people's fault. I th th I mean, oh, no. it's just it's, a great viewership. I mean, it's it's on the streamers for n not being able to make good out of it. Uh, well, I disagree. Uh, I, I I think the content is quite quite good. That's uh, yes. Uh, I think that people are more interested, however interested they were in Lord of the Rings, they are currently slightly more interested in seeing a sunset. <laughs> They're going outside, and and that is. That is not an indictment of the quality of art that everybody is creating. It's not an indictment of the platforms that are making it. It is a reflection of ultimately the people who pay the money to watch the things is that, uh, 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 you know, the idea of going out to a trivia night is more engaging than the idea of uh, seeing certainly, more excellent yeah, television. Certainly in a lockdown, you're going to get higher consumption. I don't know, but I'm curious to know, like, year over year and whatnot, month after month, like, there's a lot more content out there. And, you know, I I have not, last movie I saw, actually I saw a week ago, I went to, because my sister-in-law produced a, a movie, an Indian movie, uh, Satya, Prem, Satya Prem Kitakata, and went to go see that, right? But I have not seen Dial Destiny. I have not seen a Marvel movie in a theater. <laughs> I don't remember the last time I saw a Marvel movie in a theater. Yeah, and I used to go probably every night. Pre pandemic, right? Uh, because I assume you didn't see no, the Paul Eternals. No, saw Black Widow. Saw Black Widow. In a theater? In a theater? In yeah. Oh. I didn't know. If, I didn't even know they showed it in that theater. Yeah, I, they, I, did I, the I, they did the duel. They did the oh, duel. They did the duel. Oh, that's right. That's right. It, yeah, because yep. uh, she had to sue. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was awful. Um, and uh, I have my. Yeah, anyhow, point of saying is like, yeah, like I don't know last time I went to go theater to go see something. I mean, probably we'll go see um Mission Impossible because that team, last time I went to a theater to see one of their movies, man, did they make me happy? And so I, I'm anxious to give them that support. But I don't I don't know what the overall numbers. I would say there's a quality like Rings of Power. I don't think Brian the problem with Rings of Power was that people were out, you know, out of their homes. Did you watch Rings of Power? No, 
because that's uh, 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 number one. It was based on the most tedious and expansive of all of the properties from J.R.R. Tolkien, uh-huh. uh, and uh, and I ain't got time. I ain't gonna spend my pandemic doing homework. What are you crazy? Well, I mean, post came out like pretty much post pandemic. I'm saying like yeah. now, like it's it's you know. I, but have you replaced the, the Rings like, of Power with going outside more? I think is the the question here. Like better question, yeah. That the show, yeah, that show is boring. But we're still, you're still like, I still watch a lot of stuff. If anything, I'm watching less of the streamers and more on YouTube. Um, but I'm mm-hmm. not well, going. Well, we I mean, talked about like, you know, I, I think when when you look at the economics of it, uh, you know, Brian, the article, and I've not read it, but I have certainly skimmed it over your shoulder as you've gone through it. Um, <laughs> Uh, I think I've seen a, a line go down. <laughs> yeah, I think you know it, it, the 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 lesson that Hollywood has learned recently to take the Rings of Power example is that Amazon spent a gigantic amount of money on that. It spent like a ham sandwich on jury duty, which For was freebie. a freebie thing. So that is supporting their ad supported thing. You cannot watch it without ads. Right. You can watch it on Amazon Prime. But you will watch it with ads, and that has been a gigantic hit for them. Like, all the metrics show jury duty being a big thing. So guess what Amazon's going to probably do more of? (laughs) Do more uh, 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 shot-in-the-dark, quirky, adult, uh, uh, but not crazy adult kind of comedies. So like like R-rated television shows that expand over a certain period of time and uh, 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 you know, juice whatever ad uh, spending is going to happen over there, and maybe less of gigantic prestige dramas like you know Rings of Power or so, Foundation or stuff like that. That that or or even Star Wars. I mean, like like if you look at that era of big IP, we need to get people onto these services to make them care. Uh, the 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 larger lesson might be we, we that might be done. Like like we we might get one or two a year but but i don't think in the in the in the situation that we've been in where it's four star wars shows a year four marvel shows a year uh, uh i i think i think we're, we're we are we are looking at a shifting world there. that that's a fascinating question that i i would not have believed one year ago but but it could it be and i'm just floating this out there and I, I want to hear everybody's ideas on it. Could it be that we're leaving the era of sequels behind because uh, sequels tended to be blue ch- chip stocks, right? Where it's like, you're going to spend a lot of money, but you know, they're going to see the next Terminator movie or what have you. Uh, and instead it looks like the better investment would be a highly diversified portfolio of, of scratch off lottery tickets to do a bunch of a bunch of different crazy things and see which ones explode, which one happens to be the next Squid Games or what have you. I I think that's probably the smarter approach, Brian. In that that I don't know that they'll do it though, because that's the, the frustrating thing for me is as a writer watching and people living in LA and watching the studios go and say, we're going to do like, remember the universal monsters thing, right? There was photos, yes, you saw the, the monster verse. Yeah. There. The dark universe. Yeah. We're going to create a monster verse. And then like, I read like who they brought into the writer's room. I'm like, this is going nowhere. And, and because they just don't know, like studios just don't know. Maybe they'll realize they're really bad. And I can, there are some, you know, we've heard some IP mentioned that's going through there. And I don't want to knock things. Somebody who may potentially pay me a lot of money one day for the rights to one of my books. But I would say I'm really good at predicting when these things are going to go or not go based upon the showrunner. Okay. And I think if anybody actually pays attention to this, yeah. you can too. Real it's quick. It's not a tricky. A, a sidebar that does not involve Andrew Maine at all, but only involves Brian and Justin. Uh, Monster Universe, where it was successful, and they exactly model... <laughs> model and track everything on the Avengers and everybody's snarky and everybody's zinging each other and it's uh, Frankenstein and Dracula and the mummy. <laughs> I, well, I mean, if they would have made those characters the main characters of those movies, uh, uh, that, that would have been the first place to start. Uh, main, uh, uh, you, were, you, were, you were saying. So what I'm saying is like, I, do, I think, Brian, I think your approach is right. I think that when I look at you look at the budget for like rings of power happened because 
Bezos and Amazon wanted Game of Thrones. They wanted, they really, really, really wanted their own Game of Thrones. That was, they went out to do it. And they're like, well, we can get the Lord of the Rings fan. We can get this part of the IT. Meanwhile, the other IT is out there though. So you're going to have another read Lord of the Rings films and all this other thing. And I remember at the time going like, you've got some fantastic fantasy writers living today. You know what made Game of Thrones great? George R. R. Martin was an amazing writer, created this amazing, amazing series of books that people loved. And but Hollywood will sometimes, oh, we bought this buzzy book. Like, yeah, you bought a book, but three years later, were people still talking about it or into it? You know, and so I think that uh, there is so much good literature out there, like amazing. And they, but they, they like, I know they're like, well, we did that with Wheel of Time. Like, yeah, you did Wheel of Time, you threw new money at it, and it looked like it was low budget, nothing, you know, like it was just, you know, and I think that. Uh, with Lord of the Rings, when I looked at like the showrunners working on this, I was like, well, I mean, I'll give this thing a chance, but, to, uh, but as far as tent pole, is it go? Sorry, go ahead. Well, I, 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 I don't want to go out of order if you want to hold on to it, but before we started this program, you were talking about that you just watched Silo. Um, the, uh, Silo was a curious uh, experience for me because, you know, it's based on the book uh, series Wool. Uh, and I was like, man, why do I not remember any of this? And uh, it, it, I actually asked it live on the air and we had somebody write in saying because very much of Silo was implied as the back history into Wool. And so they had space to expand and tell really interesting stories on there. So I, I it makes me wonder because Wool was not a giant blockbuster of a book. I mean, it was successful. Oh, what? It was, in the, it was self-published. It was the most successful self-published series. Hugh Howey, it was humongous in the publishing world because of that. Correct, cor correct. Because it was self-published, but, 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 self it didn't get the attention, yeah. Exactly, right, as opposed to, you know, a traditional blue chip, right? And so they had the flexibility to try something really interesting. And meanwhile, you've got, uh, let's say, the the Fallout series, which I, I'm told is going to be a TV show or something, uh, but, but uh, the Fallout series of games essentially has a very similar dynamic on there. Uh, I am certain that Silo is going to be better than whatever we're going to see from Fallout. And uh, it's because they had more flexibility to to get creative and wild with it. And, and uh, you know, we're talking about orders of magnitudes of uh, different levels of money between the Fallout franchise and the Wolf franchise. Yeah, I, I looked at, you know, when I see when something's coming out, I'll go look and see who's the showrunner for it or who the showrunner's for it. And that that makes that gives me, I will decide if I'm going to be into it or not very quickly because of that. You know, Wool, I'm like, uh, when it got you know, picked up to be Silo, I'm like, well, let's see. And I'm like, oh, Graham Yost. Well, what has he done? Oh, I don't know. Oh. Band of Brothers, The Pacific, <laughs> Justified. Justified, I mean, I'm yeah. Like, I'm like, of course. This is, this is, this guy has made shows that are really good thinking person. And he made these shows. He's very involved in these shows. You know, also like, you know, spat out screenplays for like speed, you know, and so, yeah. uh, and, and adapted to the times really, really well. And so, um, I, you know, I think that, you know, a guy like that, like I get excited because I go, oh yeah, these are shows that I really, they weren't trash, you know, they were really good things. And then I see sometimes other people like, oh yeah, that person's great if they're working with another great talent. And it's, it is frustrating because you just clearly go, and I know that some showrunners are liked because they get shows done on budget. They get things done on time. They get things do, and studios will make this decision. Will they'll be like, well, what about so-and-so? Like, Always on budget, always on time, has had some good hits. It could really work here. And it's like, well, it didn't. So um, I think maybe they'll start to get aware of that. But for the back to the question, will they be doing like big, but big, huge stuff? You know, the the giant in the room that we're talking about before is Apple. Apple, Apple has, Apple can, Apple was able to spin up an entire electric car company internally and spend billions of dollars on it and never have it officially be announced or anybody know that it was a thing and then shut it down and it never affected their bottom line. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they can be there. There's going to be like Netflix is in a different situation. Cause like the fact that, you know, we talked about the thing stock, Facebook, Apple, Netflix, Google, it was always weird that you put Netflix in there because Netflix is like, we can, there's only X number of people on the planet that can pay 20 bucks a month for a subscription to something. And they quickly reach that. And it's like, where are you going to go now? Where is yeah. your growth going to go now? Hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, what does Hollywood look like? I mean, because if, if there's one thing that seems like it is phasing out is the idea of super exclusive walled gardens where nothing is ever going to make it across. And uh, you are you are starting to see licensing, which is something that happened all the time, you know, in, in, an, in an era. In the monoculture days. Uh, uh, yeah, before we were studios would like, all right, well, if we're not going to put it on our thing, then we'll sell it to you so you can put it on you thing, your thing if you really like it. At least we'll be able to make X amount of money on it. Um, and especially now that we've gone, you know, 10 years, 10 plus years of people making siloed content, now it's novel. It's novel to see insecure uh, on uh, uh, Netflix. Netflix, right? You know, and I think we'll probably see, you know, there'll probably be a big moment when like The Sopranos or something like that is 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 there a a title that's been around for a while that anybody's wanted to watch can still watch on HBO, but uh, there'll be some kind of way that everybody can sort of trade money there. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It'll be very curious. I w I wonder if if uh, if TV or film production will get cheap enough that uh, the, the structure and the system we have now for distributing video, streaming video, uh, turns more into a music industry style system where uh, you have to be on all of the platforms because it doesn't cost you that much to be everywhere. And people are people have their platform. They You're a Spotify person or you're an Apple Music person. The thing that's keeping that down is presumably uh, you know, publisher and studio investment, right? They have to, they got to make their money back because it's super expensive. But at some point, that cost is going to come down. Well, but but, but I uh, could, uh, uh, could uh, maybe. Uh, yeah, I know, no, I, I I would say exclusivity of platform is built into the model of television and movies. Like that I, is. I think it'll be, be use Apple as an example because you're not going to see Apple shows, Apple originals show up anywhere else they want you to go to the Apple ecosystem to get it. By the way, the, the Formula One movie you talked about, do you know who's directing this? Uh, Neil Jer Blomkamp? Uh, Jerry Bruckheimer. No. no, directing. Joseph oh. Kaczynski. Oh, sorry, I was and thinking of the, the Grand Turismo. The same team that made Top Gun Maverick, Yeah. right? And yeah. so they that Apple can say, hey, Mavericks, what's what's a, you know, there's Tim Cook's like, hey, what what's a big movie that people like? Top Gun Maverick. Oh, Let's get those guys to make a thing. Well, you know, that's going to cost hundreds of millions of dollars. We'll spend billions. No, hundreds of millions. Oh, oh, yeah, sure. You know, Bargain. I think that's the this, this scale that they're at. They literally hired the team that made Top Gun Maverick and Brad Pitt to say, make an Apple original for us. And so that is just such a weird yeah. game changer. No, they are, you know? they are, they are a, a, a you know, uh, uh, they've, they have landed into this uh, and, and a, as it is now, it seems as if Apple's expenditures into the world of Hollywood are largely to draw people to the idea of buying Apple uh, products. Not that they need the biggest help there, but also uh, so Tim Cook can go to the Emmys and the Oscars. Yeah, well, they're they are doing, uh, and, uh, and Bryce, you're right. Like Bruckheimer's producing it, but like, yeah, Krasinski is directing it, and. The deal calls for a wide theatrical release with a meaningful window, and we'll have the creative team paid three ways. Their upfront, upfront fees, hefty buyout fees, and a theatrical back end. And they're going to do a run of at least 30 days in the theaters, and could go as high as 60. Plus, it's going to be there before going to Apple TV. So they're trying a very interesting model. But when you get Apple in the game, does that mean Google? Does that mean Microsoft? Do these other systems, you know, is are you going to see Microsoft, the Xbox platform? Is Xbox going to try to produce IP that's you know, mm. I don't know. I just think well, that, that I think that we have to start to think the game's going to get very weird. Well, and I think if we talk about that uh, of of others following suit, right? You can look at say iTunes and the the Apple Music, the iTunes Music Store, and how that ended up getting uh, Google had a has had multiple music services, right? Uh, the uh, uh, any no, it. it, it there was a service element there to that that you could copy rather easily, partly because music was easier. But with, I mean, this goes back to to what you were saying, Justin. There there is a bit of of platform uh, 
dependency with with film and TV still. Yeah, I, I think and and whenever you've tried to whenever you've tried that in music, it hasn't really worked. You know, like Tidal had exclusive uh, uh, artists, and and that was that was something that that didn't work in a way that you know music consumers demand that they be able to buy whatever they want, largely wherever they want. And with few exceptions, like maybe back in the day, like a Best Buy or a Walmart might have an exclusive version of an album that has an extra song or something like that, or, right. or, or, or a different album cover. Um, you've never really seen platform exclusivity in any way, you know, with, with music it, wherein, you know, with, Movies, there's exhibitionists, you know, so you you have your your movie houses that are going to show it. Like that's a huge part of the the economics that are there. And obviously television, you had television stations that, you know, unless it went into syndication, uh, Seinfeld lived on NBC. It wasn't going to also air in, in, in other places. Now, part of that is because of uh, physical, you know, demands or, or mm. physical limitations on those platforms. But, mm. you know, I, uh, uh, unless there was a gigantic sea change, that would be it'd be interesting, but then again, I mean, like we're gonna see a bunch of stuff happen. You know, whether or not Apple I, buys anybody, like the, some of these places are just going to shut down. I think or merge with 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 other with other streaming services. Here, here's my prediction. Like I said before, like I'm skeptical that Apple's going to try to buy a studio because, like I said, Apple a studio is basically a bank that makes bets, and I don't know that the studios are really particularly good on that. Apple by going directly to you know, like Apex, well, we're going to go to Bruckenheimer, or we're going to go directly to the team that made this thing. And that shows you that they have the capability to make those deals. So why, why buy a studio? You know, maybe for content libraries and stuff, but if it's, we'll see. That being said, here's, here's the future. Like, so Google shut down YouTube originals, right? And YouTube originals, by the way, gave us shows like, you know, Cobra, Cobra Kai. Kai. Yeah. 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 Which became, you know, phenomenally successful on Netflix. I don't think Google is done. I do think we will probably see some form of Google streaming service, but it can't be the YouTube brand because the YouTube brand is we want, you know, people expect free. I think they could come up with their own standalone Google platform. And I think Facebook may do the same too. Because these companies, you know, Google's uh, trillion dollar plus company, Facebook's not anymore, but it's Facebook's, you know, $750 billion valuation. They've got money, they sell ads. I think that anytime they look at where eyeballs are going somewhere else, I can see that them wanting to offer that. We've seen the rise now of uh, the free, you know, ad-supported, you know, uh, free uh, ad-supported TV streaming. Fast. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Free ad-supported streaming television. We've seen that become bigger. I think that's going to become kind of an even more of a thing. So I, I'm curious. My point of this, I'm saying, is I'm very curious about the people with the deepest pockets coming in here and doing that. And Disney does not have deep pockets. Disney does not have deep pockets. No. Netflix doesn't really have deep pockets anymore. Though that what what you're describing was how Netflix got it got started into originals. That was how House of Cards happened. They said we have all this data. Mm -hmm. We know if we do the show with these with all of these actors and we get David Fincher, uh, people will watch it, and uh, it worked. Well, and, they uh, spent what, all and, the money to get all those people. And granted, it was early. That was before they really solidified the original thing. But this is the similar type of play that you're talking but, about. But, but also, well, this is this is the part that many people do not remember is the part of the reason that they invested so heavily, they bet so hard on originals, was because they were uh, dangerously close to becoming addicted to Stars content. Because Stars was the library that they had licensed at the mm -hmm. time. That was their hedge, and they spent hundreds of millions of dollars in order to break their addiction to other to licensing well, stuff yeah. from other people yeah because they knew the next term for the re the re-up with stars was going to be super expensive and that's when they looked at to like like you said the venture stuff then they made the deal with marvel mcu stuff difference here being is that um the net one the problem the netflix model made remember they started to try to do their own tenfold movies remember bright and some of these other ones which were clearly they were spending you know doing what brian said make a bunch of smaller bets they tried to make these big, huge bets. They go spend, you look at like the big Netflix movies they did and one, they were buying stuff before, they were buying stuff with talent, you know, named actors, but it was just crap. It was just yeah. stuff that was gonna bomb at the box office. And I don't know how much they thought through that. And then they would they would pay to do their own stuff. Like Bright was going to be this big franchise Bruce was to be well into the Bright series. Nobody remembers it now. And it was the little things like Stranger Things, you know, things like that, that all of a sudden become big hits, Squid Game, stuff like that. So. 
their ability to predict stuff isn't very good. I don't know how good internally they are going, yeah, we effed up here because they keep telling you, oh, yeah, no, this was a hit. This was great. It's like, we know it's not true. Do you know, have you convinced yourselves that it wasn't true? But that, that would say, here's, here's a big factor is Apple doesn't make its, Apple makes its revenue from selling you devices, and then it would like to do a subscription business on top of it. And it has that money, that extra source of money coming in that it can support to justify that subscription service. Google could be in that place. Facebook could be in that place. And so it's a different game than Netflix, where Netflix was, we've got to have this content pipeline. We've got to have this or we're doomed, where they can dig, they can take their time, they can make their bets. And yeah. Brian, you have a thought? We'll see. Because well, uh, I think both... Uh, uh, you, you, you've made a really, really good point in that Facebook and Google are ad sales company, uh, companies. I think it is kind of surprising now that, now that, uh, we've kind of walked down this road for a little bit that they have not tried to get into fast. Um, yeah. because you'd think the company that sells YouTube ads would also like to sell, you know, like, yeah, I, hmm. I, I think that would be, I think that could be, I think they need to do it as a separate brand while they realize that or not. Uh, somebody talked about how the content on Streamberry being better. My problem with the content on Streamberry is that it takes, it squeezes 20 minutes of plot into an hour and everything you need to know in the first eight minutes has been told you how it's going to end. That's my problem with Streamberry. Although, you know, Joan is awful is a fine show. Uh, uh, apparently Facebook, uh, just shut down their originals program, uh, back in April. So yeah, it, it yeah, it, it might be a minute before they get back into it unless well, they do but, a Pluto style, unless they do like a Pluto style licensing fast thing, which yeah, I could see when, them do. When they shut a thing down, it's not that they go, oh, there's no money here. They go, this team, this division is not this doing team what is we want Stinko to Malinko. Get him out. Oh, and it's real. often there is a other thing that they're going to do and they shut down that thing to do that and not like they're going to maybe i don't know i'm not no insight but sometimes like yeah they shut that down because they, oh, they knew a year before that wasn't going the direction and then they're like let's do anything i totally i totally see them doing some sort of fast here's here's the argument public. against it though man google and facebook or meta not exactly great at building totally new products and have a history of, uh, at least Google or, does, or, of, of, of having people not want to invest in it because they think they're going to pull the plug within a year and a half. That's the advantage is if they do a fast service, what you do is you sit your team down, have them watch Pluto, have them watch one of the other services and say, go build that. And then be like, okay, and then what can, what can we license for $200 million? Yeah. And then you do it and then you have a new thing. And then, and then you, if they're smart, they like what they did with threads, it wasn't Facebook threads or meta threads. It wasn't Instagram threads. They took this brand that people still like and do that. So, uh, I think that the hard part for them is they do not want to pay for content. They absolutely, they're used to getting content for free. Google might be better. And if they start to look at it, like, well, don't look at it like we're paying for content just take it out of our ad budget or something. So that'll be the big thing is, is will they want to pay for content? They historically don't want to. Hey, uh, uh, I've got 20 minutes of homework to do. Uh, so, so I'll make a quick pick. Um, rewatching boy, introducing my teenage daughters to righteous gemstones has been such a joy and going back and rewatching those first two seasons with the knowledge of everything that happens in season three. Um, it's uh, not just a great show, maybe the best show. I, I just, uh, they're, they're, it's, it's so good. Brian, here's the thing. I can't argue with a single thing you said. <laughs> <laughs> it you know, is, it, yeah. I, 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 did, you, did either of you guys watch Vice Principals? Because I, I still have not watched Vice Principals. I watched the first season. It's good. Uh, I haven't watched that second season. I'll, I'll, I'll jump in I, with that. I, I'm watching Detroiters now. Uh, that's already That's great. my pick. <laughs> Devereaux Wiggs. Uh, Definitely not made with human hair. <laughs> yeah, I did not watch. Uh, I, Vice Principles I couldn't get into because they were like, weren't likable. Yeah. Where Eastbound and Down was, yeah, like I got into that, watched that, and was able to enjoy that. I thought they're man, they're they're just too petty, too mean. Where gemstones like 
I would like to spend time with this family. I might want to go to this church and actually watch, you know, yeah. a performance there. And the way they built that world up, you go, wow, this is actually, I get the appeal of the world. And it was, it was done. Man, like McBride and his uh, producing partners, like Jody Hill. They yeah. Built a, yeah. They did it in a way that like, cause I describe it to people like, it does not make fun of faith. It does not make fun of faith. And you think, even though I'm a non-believer, I might be all, I'm like, no, I don't, I, I think you have to recognize what it brings to people and why people like it. It makes fun of hypocrisy. You know, it makes fun of that. And I think that that makes it such a great show. I mean, that's the thing is like, like even as a, a satire of, of prosperity gospel, it, you kind of, you like the family, <laughs> you want the family. Yeah. You, you always, well, they, and, they, and they, you they, believe that they believe well, yeah. yeah. I mean, beyond yeah. the personal belief in 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 a higher power, I, I think there's also this idea that like we don't want the church to get robbed, even though it's this gigantic yeah. turbine of money. Like, uh, uh, and they don't hide anything. They actually make a complicated story using things in our real world that doesn't make it very boring by taking a loud stand during the plot and have the characters look directly into the camera and tell you how to think. Exactly like that. You got it. <laughs> there you go. Point. Yeah, you got the oh, point. And the elixirs. The <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, uh, Detroiters. If you love, uh, <laughs> I think you should leave. Uh, uh, watch Detroiters. Good God. Uh, yeah. So funny. I, I got to say that. Yeah, Brian's point. Uh, Walter Goggins. Well, um, yeah. De yeah, Walter well, so deserves. I don't know if he's got an Emmy yet or whatever, but he deserves everything for it because. Baby Billy could very <laughs> easily be a Saturday Night Live cartoon sketch. It could very easily be that. But the way he does this guy, you absolutely believe it, believe it. And then the elixir is just these. Also, BJ stepping up this most recently. Oh, my God. <laughs> BJ's, BJ's grown on me. He's just, he is, yeah, he's a very well written, very just. The, the, the end, the end of last the end of last season when they have the big moment of revelation for the larger plot be revealed with BJ on rollerblades <laughs> kneeling behind various things. And the physical comedy on that show is just second to none. It's so good. Yeah. I have to uh, check out the Detroiters. Oh yeah, no. Detroiters is I'll second it. I, I'm only one episode in, but I fell in love instantly. Uh, worth it. Uh, yeah, uh, it just it's 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 magic. And considering where Tim Robinson and Sam Richardson have have kind of gone in their careers, you can just watch them be amazing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I got a uh, a quick pick for you. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, they made a they made a city building game on on uh, the mobile a while ago. Uh, called Pocket City, and it was cool because you just paid like five or six bucks, and uh, then you just had the game. There wasn't like a bunch of timers and um, microtransactions and stuff. Uh, and so they just put out a sequel, Pocket City 2, uh, a few months ago. Uh, this one is interesting because it is uh, it's in 3D, um, and so it has this like free roam element to it where you can just take your little guy and put it on the road, and you can walk around your city, and they populate it with pedestrians and little things to do. Um, it's pretty neat for, for a city management game. That's not uh, designed to just get as much money out of you as possible. Uh, Pocket city too. Pretty good. Excellent. Um, I played around with it so far. I don't have a lot of things to tell you early on. And I just dropped my 13 steps to mentalism, the current book, but that's fine. <laughs> you know there. Um, I wonder if it's I, all that kind of been, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> Page 22, <laughs> chapter, the prophecy. I got the, I, was, I got the Amazon scribe. And uh, what I did was Amazon has a pretty good trading deal. If you have like a lot of older like devices sitting around, like I've got a stack of like Kindle stuff up there. So I was able to turn an old one in. I never used, I got 20 bucks plus 20% off. And I was able to use that with one of their early prime day specials. I had the remarkable tablet before I had the remark. I was not happy with the remarkable tablet. It just, I just wasn't because also it's like, Man, I can write on it. What else can you do? You can write on it. Sweet. Cool. And where the scribe is a similar thing, but I can read books on it and I can take a book and I can highlight it. I can make notes in books. And when you, what it does a really cool thing is like when you make notes in a book, um, 
Oh, this actually worked. I, I can send things from Blinkist to here, which is really awesome. Oh. Is when you make a note in a book, it will give you a basically a summary of that that'll email you this whole here's called your clippings. And so it's like everything I highlighted is here and then it'll email it to you and it will email it to you also a CSV file. Oh, nice. So if you want to put that into something else like Obsidian or something else like that, super cool. So like using that with Blinkist is great because like you can actually send your blinks to there. So it'll send, you know, uh, the thing I read if I want to follow up. So here are the blinks on, you know, James Gleick's book on time travel. So anyhow, um, I've been enjoying it. It's it's if you want to get it, I recommend like, yeah, just use take advantage of their trade in deal or whatever. Wait for a deal on it. The writing on it's really nice. And I've been using it for journaling, you know. Uh, yes, I'm trying to journal now. So nice. Cool. Have have you found it to be a good journaling thing? Have you has has yeah. it aided you in doing it? Yes, because it's a dedicated device and like I I I, I I'm skeptical of the value of like dream journaling, but I'm going to try it is the spirit of open-mindedness, but also just regular journaling what I do each day. And I am like, after I finish this podcast, I'm going to sit down for a few minutes. And I'm going to write down what I did up until now. And cause my goal is trying to improve my personal autobiographical memory. And it is amazing the number of things that come back to you when you sit down to write it, who would know? Mm. Nice. Uh, very cool. Uh, the, the, uh, is it is it a Kindle? Is is it still yep. just a Kindle? Kindle Scribe. That? Okay. Kindle Scribe. Yeah. There you go. Check it out. Cool. All right, gentlemen. It's been after. Hey, there we go. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us here for the after things good weird, and the weird things. Oh my goodness. Oh my. Oh jeez. Oh, He's falling fun. apart. I'm falling apart. He's falling oh. apart. My powers are seven gone. days into July. <laughs> By the way, the Google Meet seemed to work really well. Yeah. Um, I I would like us to. The, the for some reason the audio quality ended up not being very good. We'll do Opal. We can do Opal for the okay. audio if you want. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. Yeah. I I thought otherwise it was nice and stable. Yeah. The video looked great. Yeah. Are we still live? Uh, we Everybody. are still live. Thank okay. you everybody for joining us here. Thank you. Uh, have Thank a, you. A good rest of your Friday. Bye. Yeah. Bye bye.